Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad to join me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today's message is to keep our eyes open. We must have our eyes open because there's false teachers out there, brothers and sisters, and you need a discernment of whether they're teaching you correctly or not, and the Holy Spirit will guide and direct you. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of 1 John, chapter 1. And we'll read verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So brothers and sisters, we have to confess our sins to our Lord and Savior. We have to admit that we're a sinner to be saved. It's like an alcoholic. Until he admits that he has a problem drinking and he's an alcoholic, he will never change. He will never correct the problem. And so that's the first step to salvation, as you know if you're saved today. Now turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 5, and we'll read verse 32. And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. So here, brothers and sisters, it's very clear that once you confess you're a sinner, you say the Lord's Prayer of salvation, that you believe that Jesus came from heaven, incarnated in human form, to die on a cross for your sins and mine, was buried and rose. And then you've repented of your sinful ways. You change, you make proper changes in your life to better yourself, to walk as Jesus did. And that doesn't mean you're never going to sin. Only Jesus walked the earth perfect. But you're going to better yourself. And when you do, God fills you with the Holy Spirit. Here it's very clear. He gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Amen? Amen. So now turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 6. And in verse 5, it reads, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. You know, God has put ministers in your life. If you go to church, if you're saved today, as you know, the Lord says, do not forsake gathering together in my name. It's very important, brothers and sisters, that we attend a church, a Bible teaching church, but not just a Bible teaching church, but one that teaches the truth. If you have somebody teaching that you don't have to repent from your sinful ways, that's a lie. That's a first thing Jesus preached was repentance. So we know that you have to do that. If you have a minister or a pastor telling you, you don't have to ask for forgiveness. You already confessed your sins. No, no brothers and sisters. In Matthew chapter 6, our Lord gives an example of how we are to pray. And in that example, it says, forgive us our debts. We are asking God to forgive our sins. When do we do that? In verse 6, it said to go in and shut your door and in private pray to the Father. And you need to do that every night before you go to bed. 
Anything can happen during the night. You can get a heart attack and die. You don't want to meet the Lord without asking for forgiveness for the sins that you did that day. Maybe you felt you didn't sin that day. But many times, brothers and sisters, we can sin and not realize it. Right? The Bible says gossip is a sin. You can gossip and not realize it. The Bible says that being a glutton is a sin, eating too much. You can do that and not realize it. The Bible says to obey the laws of the land. You can speed in your car. Right? So when you pray at night, and preferably on your knees in private, ask the Father in heaven to forgive you for the sins you did, that you know you did, if you did any. And then ask for forgiveness for sins you did that, that you didn't know you did. We must humble ourselves, brothers and sisters, to our Maker, God Almighty. Don't let anybody deceive you. In Matthew 15, 14, it tells us, If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a ditch. You understand? So, use common sense. But mostly, use the Bible, brothers and sisters. If the Word of God, if Jesus Himself, on the Sermon on the Mount, tells you, you have to ask for forgiveness, you do. Every day. And if you sin and you realize you did it, right? Ask for forgiveness right then. And then at night, do that formal prayer and ask for forgiveness of the things you knew you did and the things you did you didn't know about. Amen? Amen. Turn to... The book of James, chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Now, brothers and sisters, common sense will tell you that what he's talking about here is if you teach someone to do wrong, there's a stricter judgment. There's a higher penalty. You understand? It's not just that you're doing wrong, but then you're teaching someone else to do wrong. Don't do it. Make sure that when you teach something, it's correct. Last passage we read is in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Before we read that, I would like to read a verse from Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. So brothers and sisters, if you have been misled, maybe a preacher or a pastor has told you, you don't have to repent from your sinful ways. You don't have to change and obey the Lord and you're feeling sad about it, that's good. We don't feel bad about sinning, we have a problem. Because our Lord and Savior died on a cross and paid the penalty for you and me so that we could live forever. Which is something we don't deserve. We don't, but he did that for us. And now we have to do something for him and that's serve him. As he's a master. He's our master. Look at it like you're a slave. And you're going to serve him. And please God and do his will. The best you can. And when you sin, you feel bad. You have remorse in your heart. And God will forgive you. And he'll bless you for that. Amen. Amen. When Paul would find himself entrapped in sin, he would work even harder to get back into the grace of God, to get on that righteous path, that narrow path to heaven. He would work harder and harder, and he would better himself and better himself. Because brothers and sisters, you and I can better ourselves because we have the gift 
of the Holy Spirit, which is part of Jesus inside of you. It's more powerful than anything in the world, including the devil. And so when you're tempted, you just rebuke the devil in Jesus' name, and he will flee. There's power in Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus, and there's power in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So a reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. So we all have that crown of righteousness waiting for us. If you are practicing righteousness for our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So I want to end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the king of our hearts. Please, Father, help us to discern the truth. Give us great understanding of your word of God. Help us to be good servants of our Lord and Savior Jesus and to please you and do your will. And your will always be done, Father, not ours. And we pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew, Yeshua. And so brothers and sisters, always remember to pray up every day and ask God for forgiveness for anything that you may have done. And all will be well with you.